It is the halfway point of the XBL season, and with only three weeks of play left to go, the mad chase for postseason contention has begun. In the middle of the pack is Chris and his Area 51ers, who are four games over 500 and are just a few wins outside of a top four first round by seed. But on the outside looking in, Ted Danson's Dragoons are looking to bounce back from a 1-3 and three week that have put them just outside the top 12 and are fighting to get back in the playoff picture. Only 12 teams can make the postseason, and it's anyone's game. This is Sunday Night XBL and your Match of the Week. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another production of the XBL Cross-Platform Baseball League. I'm Light Snack, a.k.a. Fleurabelle, a.k.a. your play-by-play -play announcer. Joining me on color, Mamma Mia Pizzeria. It's the Beaver himself, Weaver for Prez. What a matchup we have tonight, right? I cannot wait for this. Two, two gritty teams. Uh, these are going to be good games. I have no doubt. It really is going to be a, a game of grit. These are two uh, pitching-focused players, right? Uh, they're, they're contact specialists. They, they do 100% contact swinging, if I'm not mistaken. And, and pitching is at the forefront of both of their builds. Yeah, Chris 
Chris, I know for a fact, is 100% contact. Ted usually strays that way as well. We have seen him dabble a little bit in power the last uh, two weeks or so. But again, if he's not 100% contact, he's he's high 90s. But but like you said, both definitely pitching first teams. Uh, that's self-evident in their opponent batting averages. Okay, here you go. Chris, ranked fourth in opponent batting average. Ted, ranked sixth. Uh, and then on top of that, Chris... Only four home runs given up. This is going to be a low-scoring series, I would think. Exactly. We've got a likely pitcher's duel ahead of us tonight. Uh, Chris actually has only allowed three runs combined in his last four games played, uh, with two of those games being uh, shutouts. If his pitchers can do what they've done as of late, and if his bats can wake up and produce some run support, the 51ers are going to be a hard team to beat. Yeah, yeah, 51ers... I believe it's a five bar rotation. They are all about starting pitching. Just about everyone in the league now nowadays knows about uh, the likes of Gunga Malunga and uh, uh, Kintu Kuntu or whatever his name is. Uh, everyone he throws out there can throw darts at big velocity numbers. Uh, and then actually Ted is quite the opposite. Ted is one of the if one of the only, if not the only player in the league that has not gone in the way of high velocity. He is all about low velocity, big junk. So we'll see if you can get Chris to chase those big sweeping sliders, those big curveballs, and those uh, tantalizing change-ups. And like you said, even with the absence of the high velo, Ted's pitching has been successful on the large part, showing up on that sixth lowest opposing batting average uh, that his pitchers are able to deal with. Uh, funny enough, the Dragoons are consistent in that remark, both on offense and defense. They have the sixth lowest opposing batting average for their pitching staff, they also have the sixth highest batting average <laughs> on offense. So consistency is clearly key for the Dragoons. Yeah, Ted has a great eye. He, he's a lot of people call him like the master of check swings or what have you. He, he's very tough to get chasing garbage out of the zone. And he's, he's also known to quick strike you with a rally here and there. I, I, I would bet we'll see one today, a patented Ted rally, where it's just single after single after single, relentless hitting. Uh, that that could be the key here for Ted in game one or game two. Small ball will likely be the name of the game for Ted uh, if he's going to be making a huge rally in this series. Uh, as far as the long ball goes, it will likely be absent from this series. Only eight home runs have been given up by the Dragoons all season, and only four home runs have been given up by the 51ers. I believe that's a league low. Four homers given up by their pitching staff. Yeah, these guys do not give up the long ball, and they don't really hit them either. Again, because I said they don't really swing for much power. Doesn't mean we won't see a home run, but again, or not again, but uh, I should say, Chris plays at Bingata, a, a pretty balanced uh, stadium dimension-wise, but deep. And then Ted plays at Shaka, which everyone knows is the toughest ballpark to hit the ball out of the ballpark. So yeah, uh, I would not expect even a single home run, but again, we, you never know. These are two of the best players in the world, so we'll see. Ted, Ted's also going to have his work cut out to him, uh, not just for home runs, but on taking walks. Chris has only issued two walks all yeah. season, and that's just unheard of with how, how crazy difficult it can be to land those pitches where you want them at 90 Ego. Yeah, only two walks on the season. The first one was last week, I believe, and it was to Lazy, who... Uh, if, if you're going to walk someone, it might as well be lazy because uh, you don't want them to take you 450 feet. But yeah, impressive pitching, impressive accuracy here for that incredible staff. It, it should be on display again here today, tonight, yeah, actually. It's now or never for Ted. Only two more series in this season does he have against sub 500 average teams. Uh, if he's going to make a playoff push, he's going to need to get every win he can can he he can possibly get his hands on. And as for Chris. Since he's in the running for that first round by, might as well reach for the stars, right? Yeah, critical game for both teams, but for different reasons. Chris trying to get that good seeding. Uh, well, I mean, technically he could fall out of the playoffs, but he's he's in a good spot, so I don't think we'll see it. Chris looking for good seeding. Ted looking to stay alive. He's he's currently in thirteenth, I believe, uh, behind Alec Ad, who again, uh, we're, we've got a bonus matchup of the week tomorrow night between Alec and BK. So that again, huge game there, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if Ted can put some pressure on him tonight. And we will see that in just a few moments as we get ready for your XBL match of the week. Chris's Area 51ers taking on Ted Danson's Dragoons. We'll be right back with more XBL action.
Yeah, it looks like we're still on the uh, video cam. And it looks like we'll be heading to Shaka Sports Turf. Ted Danson's Dragoons will have the home field advantage starting out here, taking on Chris and the Area 51ers. First up to bat is Andro Maeda, and he will be taking on Winter Anubis on the mound. For the Dragoons, the first pitch inside for a ball. Pitching quickly, getting into the count. One and one. Maeda takes a step out of the box. And a 2-1 count here for the right-handed batter. Swung on and lifted to the gap in right field. Will it get down? It will not. Kruger ranges over and makes the first out of the game. Yeah, I'll junk on Anubis here, but those first three pitches were all either four seamers or two seamers. It was the changeup that Chris hit hard. We'll see how that develops. See if Ted goes back to the changeup, throws that one just outside the strike zone. The low velo already evident. This one is lifted into shallow left field. The shortstop walks back, camps under it, makes the grab two away. Looks like Ted attacking uh, Chris here early in the zone. We'll see if Chris can uh, take advantage. First pitch is swung on into shallow right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. 51ers have a two-out runner aboard. Great piece of hitting there for the 51ers. Patented Chris contact. Should see more of it. The Steeler trade active for the runner at first. Bats up dog. The designated hitter. Good power and contact. The lefty staring down. Anubis. The 10th pitch of the game. Swung on and lifted onto the infield. First baseman comes in. Makes the grab. And the 51ers go down. Yeah, both of these hitters have exceptional eyes at the plate. Uh, being contact swingers, it's e I would argue it's a bit easier to lay off the tough pitches. Chris unable to hold up on that one. But I think going forward, we will see that good eye come out to play. And Kuntu Kintu, as you talked about earlier, steps onto the mound. A 124 ERA. Jeez. Five pitch arsenal, four seamer cutter slider, the screwball, and the change. He goes for the four seamer high on the 0 2. Swung on, just got a piece of it. Maeda ranges back, makes the grab uh, just off the infield dirt. Yeah, Chris not fooling around with the K man. He knows with this velocity plus the K man, borderline unhittable. Uh, pretty good job on Ted, though, to get a piece. Just got to close your eyes and swing at that point. Yep. Four seamers check swing. We'll see that often from Ted. No doubt. The 1-1. One, one. Heater taken at the knees. A good strike there. K-Man activates for Chris. Goes for the screwball. Swung on, got a piece of it. Lined right into the, softly into the glove of Ratty. Uh, the second baseman. Kruger comes out with two outs and nobody on. Yeah, the first screwball of the game there from Kintu. As many of us know, it's one of the tougher pitches to nail down on your on the, the bullseye mini game there. And we saw it there. It was a red pitch. Uh, that could be a factor with uh, Kintu on the mound in the screwball. Another heater at the knees, and we are at the 0-2 count. Kruger checks the swing at the changeup in the dirt. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. 103 miles per hour. Can't catch up with that one. Yep. Kintu uh, there abusing that 103 miles an hour. He missed location on it. He wanted to go above the zone, but it was in the zone. Just way too fast for Ted to handle. Top of the second inning. Score is nothing, nothing. The number, uh, Marvin Martian swings at the first pitch and lifts it to Winkleson, makes the grab. One out away here, Sintu Orion, the number six batter, playing in left field, takes the first pitch high. Winter Anubis with the low velo, definitely a uh, different pitcher to, to see in the XBL this season. Yeah, I faced Ted myself. I thought maybe the diminished velocity would be a gift, but honestly, it's a bit jarring to face. Not jarring there for Chris, though, as he's got a one-out knock. Hammered that one uh, past the pitcher's mound. Anubis just getting out of the way of that one. Avoiding an injury. 
And a runner on first with one out for uh, Theodore Brin. <laughs> what is his name? <laughs> uh, Chris played a match of the week earlier in the season, and Theodore Brim is what I ended up calling him. Theodore Brim, I like it. I will. I will not be, not be going for that one. This one is grounded to the third baseman. Going to have to be fast to get two. Thinks about second, throws it to first to get the sure out. So the runner does advance to second, but there are two outs here for Richie Rat. I'm surprised that he didn't even offer a throw to second. Uh, maybe a bit too tough to tell there. We'll see if he can get out of it regardless. First pitch is low and inside for the 1-0. This one is swung on, grounded to the second baseman. Agro picks it up, fires it to first, and that is out number three. So two hits for Chris so far, but nothing going. It's nothing all heading into the bottom of the second. All right, four, five, and six here for the Dragoons. We'll see if they get something started. Harlow Ryan batting 279, the cleanup batter for De Danson's Dragoons. Swings at the first pitch, grounded to Martian, picks it up, fires it across the diamond, and that's out number one. Kind of looking like, to me, both of these players who, I, like I mentioned, they're both excellent with their plate discipline. They take a lot of pitches. Maybe a, a, a bit of nerves here. Uh, I'm not sure. They're, they're definitely aggressive here early. Screwball is swung on and popped up in the infield just in front of home plate. Brim calls off of the pitcher, and that's two away. Evermore Tailwind batting 291. Kuntu Kintu is locked in. That's dangerous, Five. especially with the K-Man lurking. Most definitely. Five in a row retired. And this one is grounded to JT. He reaches down and it gets by him into left field. Locked in will be removed from Kuntu Kintu. And Danson's Dragoons trying to make some noise with two outs and a runner on first. Yeah, Chris needing to dive there, but not recognizing it in time. We'll see if that comes around to pay off for the Dragoons. First pitch changeup grounded to Ratty. And Maeda makes the catch at first. And just like that, the inning is over. Top of the third, nothing all. Stallone Caballo. Batting 159 in the ninth spot for Chris in the area 51. Or swings is at the first pitch down uh, the left field uh, foul line. Yeah, 159 average, definitely not the level of production you want to see, especially with the stats being where they are. They're not too bad. Uh, look to see Chris trying to raise it. It's not going to happen here, though. Comebacker right to the pitcher, picks it up cleanly, and throws it to first. For the first out, we go to the top of the order, Andro Maeda. Takes the first pitch slider off the plate. No. Doesn't offer at the heater inside, and it's a quick 2 0. Chris starting to maybe adapt to that low velo high junk, but the catcher catches the uh, foul pop up behind home plate to make it uh, two outs. I do think maybe in the long run the advantage might be on Chris here. Uh, typically, when you get super low velo like this, it's the power hitters that suffer just a little bit. Uh, obviously, sometimes it just doesn't matter with some hitters, but it might work out for Chris. Another comebacker for Anubis, and the side is retired. We head to the bottom of the third, nothing all. 8-9-1 batters due up for Ted Danson and his Dragoons. Kuntu Kintu, only 17 pitches thrown through two innings. And if you're Chris, that's what you want to be seeing from your ace right now. That key yeah. man... That locked in. This one is hammered right to Raddy. Picks it up, fires it to Maeda, and that is out number one. That could have been dangerous. Top tier efficiency here so far from King Two. Chris does not have a bad bullpen, in my opinion. But the longer he can stave it off and ride his one of his co aces here, that's gonna that's gonna spell disaster for the Dragoons. The one one here to Lennox Resplendent. A nice cutter gets in there for a strike. K-Man activates for Kuntu Kintu. The low change is swung on and lifted into shallow center field. Marvin Martian ranges back, makes the grab, and that's two away for Yuretsi McLaughlin. Only a matter of time here before he goes from locked in to on fire. First pitch is lined to Leon in center field, and the side is retired. We have at the top of the fourth inning, nothing all. Both pitchers seem to be getting locked in here early. Tell you what, though, if, if uh, King Two with the K Man gets to on fire on his mojo by, say, the fifth inning, this is this could be a long one. No doubt about it. 
Alan Leon batting 346 in the three spot. Chris is going to look to try to get ahead here. The 2-0 is swung on and fouled into the seats. Taken inside for a 3-1 count. Anubis is composed. This one is swung on right into the glove of the first baseman. Not letting that one get by him and into right field. Yeah, Chris making contact early, but just uh, not able so far to get that firm contact and get something past the outfield and into the grass. The 2-1 to bats up dog is swung on, just foul down the first base line. The 2-2, taken just inside, brings the count full. Winter Anubis is composed. Ooh, and the breaking pitch just doesn't catch the outside corner. And Chris is aboard with a two-out walk. Bit surprising there with the one composed walk, trade. Friend. Yeah, one-up. Bit surprising there with that trade active as this one is the second out here. Her accuracy, was, yeah. her accuracy was nearing 99, I want to say, and she missed that curveball. A pretty difficult miss there indeed. Runner on first. The 1-1 one -one is swung on right into the glove of the third baseman. And we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, so a little bit more threatening from Chris on that walk, but nothing going for him. The two, three, four batters, the heart of the order for Danson's Dragoons, do up. Heathcliff Winkleson, a 284 average, loves the outside pitch. Chris throws one a little bit too outside, and that's ball number one, gets away from the catcher. Cutter outside, taken. Chris flirting with danger. That pitch right there is a favorite of Chris, the, the little backdoor cutter. It's a little dangerous with the outside pitch trait, but I like the challenge. This one is lined right back to Kunta Kintu. He can't field it cleanly. No one's going to pick it up in time. And the Dragoons are aboard with a leadoff single. Yeah, it looked like Chris couldn't quite decide who to charge the ball with after it got past the pitcher. It's going to enable the slow runner to reach. This first pitch is hit well into left field. Into Orion, ranges over and makes the grab before the ball can land. Hung up there for just a little bit too long. And the runner gets back to first in time. Harlow Orion takes the cutter inside. Ball one. This one is hammered right past the glove of Maeda, and that one's going to get down into foul territory. Caballo picks it up and fires it back in. Thinking about second was Danson there. Gets back to the bag at first. And just like that, Ted Danson and his Dragoons have runners at the corners with only one out. Yeah, I think Ted maybe getting a little too scared there on the advancement. I think he had second in the bag. Decides to play it safe, though. Still only one out and a chance to go ahead. It does leave the double play uh, on the table here for Chris. But quickly in the hole, 2-0. A low changeup is hammered up the middle. Martian makes a diving play out at second, on to first, not oh. in time. And that is how Ted Danson's Dragoons get their first run of the game. They take a one to nothing lead on the ground out uh, fielder's choice. Almost the play of the night there from the shortstop, wow. And another one hammered right back up the pitcher's mound. Passed it, I should say. And runners at first and second for Ted. Kuntu Kintu no longer locked in. This is what you were talking about, Weaver. Yep. That classic Ted small ball. Those rallies that can uh, quickly get away from you. He can really bite you quickly with those quick strike rallies. I'd say he's one more firm single here from, from showing it off in all its glory. This one is grounded right to the third baseman. JT picks it up, fires it to Maeda. So Chris able to limit the damage, but a little rally from Ted gives him the first run of the ball game. They lead one to nothing. Chris's turn to answer back with the bottom of his order coming up. Theodore Brim batting 236, swings at the first pitch, lifts into foul territory. That's going to stay in the ballpark. Winkleson makes the grab. One pitch, one out. Yeah, Chris aggressive here in this top of the fifth, trying to get that run back. Against a great pitcher like Ted, even one run can put a lot of pressure on. The 1-0, check swing. Chris trying to find an opening. Swings at this one, grounds it right to Burgess. She picks it up, fires it across the diamond to Winkleson, out number two. The number nine batter, Stallone Caballo, trying to avoid going below 157. 
This one is launched into right field. Kruger makes the grab and a really quick inning for Chris in the bottom of his order. In the bottom of the fifth, Ted trying to extend his lead. Yeah, big shutdown inning there from Winter Anubis to try and maintain that momentum. We'll see if it if it uh, rolls into this home half. Check swing on the inside slider. The 1-0. 100 mile per hour on the outside corner for a strike. This one is hammered. Again, past the pitcher's mound and into center field. And a leadoff single for Ted. He knows where to hit that one. This is textbook Ted Danson. If he's on, you, you will know he's on because he's ripping him right back up the middle. This one is lifted to Caballo in right field. Gets under it, and he makes the catch uh, to get the first out of the inning. And the runner stays at first. Little power swing there. I'm not sure if he caught that. He uh, tried to sneak a little, little extra base hit there. Exactly what you were talking about. Basically 90% contact from Ted, but sometimes he will try to sneak that uh, power swing in there. K-Man activates on the 0-2. The screwball checked. A lot of restraint there from Ted. This one is swung on right to Maeda. A fair ball. <laughs> and an interesting double play. Stepped it on the bag, removing the force. The runner ran back to first base. <laughs> Right and into right the into the glove of Maeda <laughs> to record out number three. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Ted uh, not electing to try for the, the long diddle there. Probably no chance. Just went back to the base. This one is lifted into right field, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Chris, with his leadoff 1-2-3 batters, is going to try to answer back here in the sixth inning. JT is 0 for 2. A check swing on that pitch. Didn't want to swing at it. Just a bit outside, and the count comes to 1 and 1. Runner on first, nobody out. This one is swung on and fouled down the first baseline. Tough out activates for JT. This one is swung on. Bounces off oh. the glove of the third baseman. That's going to get down, and everyone is going to be safe. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Chris trying to take advantage of the situation. Huge break there for the 51ers. Ted, pretty good timing on that jump. Third baseman just let him down. Breaking ball doesn't catch the inside corner. Lays down the bunt right on home plate. It's called fair. He goes to third for the force out, and he gets it. Getting the lead runner on that play. Amazing. Wow, not the bunt you want if you're a 51ers fan. It went absolutely nowhere. I, I honestly think Ted might have had the play at first, too, if he had, if he had thrown it. This one is grounded to the shortstop. Burgess thinks about second yet again. Ted electing to get the sure out at first. Runners at second and third with two outs and Marvin Martian at the plate. Check swing on a big strike. The 0 1 pitch is grounded to the second baseman. Agro picks it up, fires it to first. And the 51ers threaten, but they do not score. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Ted holding on to that 1 0 lead. Chris got to be kicking himself right now. First and second, nobody out. That's a situation he wants back. Heathcliff Winkleson loving the outside pitch. A 292 average. Kuntu Kintu fires on the outside corner. That heater, impossible to catch up with. Goes inside with the same pitch. Switching to the changeup, the 0-2. This one is grounded to Martian. Picks it up, fires it across the diamond, and that's out number one. Yeah, smart pitch there. K-Man, as a trait in and of itself, creates so many mind games. People see it activate, and a lot of times they're sitting heat. Chris elects for the change up there. Good pitch. This cutter, though, is hammered past the diving second baseman. Leon picks it up and fires it back to the infield. But that is a one-out single for Danson's Dragoons. Arlo Ryan batting 284 on the year with one homer. Ted trying to... Extend his lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Chris trying to keep things where they are. Heater on the inside corner called strike. Goes with the K-Man. High and inside. Ooh. Big check swing from Ted. And it is called high. The 2-2. Two -two, another big check swing from Ted. And the count just like that is full. This one Ooh. just gets a piece of it. Foul spoiled down spoiled a nasty fastball there. Very nasty. The cutter. This one is hammered. 
Ted likes the cutter there and sends it into right field. Runners at first and second with one out. Yeah, Chris tried his textbook backdoor cutter, just didn't. He got it a little bit too far in there. Uh, nice piece of hitting there from Ted. A lot of speed at second base. You got to think a safe hit will bring that runner home. Genesis Agro just below 300 average on the season. That low strike heading the call yet again. Chris showing what he can do. This one is grounded to Martian. Could be two. Fires the second. Gets the first out. The throw it first. Double play to end the inning. Crucial double play there for Keen 2. Absolutely massive. A big play from Chris on defense. Keeps the game where it is and stops the threatening dance in offense. Area 51ers have to try to get a run on the board here. And this might be it for Winter Anubis. Ted considering a substitution. Anubis with only 62 pitches thrown. She's locked in and doesn't seem to be seeing any deterioration for her stats at the moment. And it they looks like Anubis will be staying in. Yeah. That's the right call in my opinion. The game is <laughs> he's held Chris scoreless. Why uh Rays fans will attest to this. Don't uh, don't <laughs> fix it if it ain't broke. Don't make her a Blake Snell a three pitch strikeout to lead things off here. Theodore Brim up with one out and nobody on. 51ers trail by one. Breaking pitch doesn't quite clip the zone, and it's a 2-0 count. Theodore looking for something to hit here. Another breaking pitch that doesn't quite hit the zone, and the 3-0 is taken all the way. Strike on the outside corner. Anubis is composed, getting that extra accuracy, and that breaking pitch Beautiful. clips the zone. A full count. This one is just lifted into shallow left field. Coming in from the infield is Burgess, and she makes the catch. Two away. Yeah, three-two change up there, kind of, kind of right down the middle, in my, in my opinion. I think Chris was looking for something a bit faster, maybe. Peter just misses low and away. Inside gets Richie to swing at it. It's lifted foul. Winkleson ranges over, makes the grab. Another three-up, three-down inning. Seventh inning stretch here at Shaka. Danson leads one to nothing. Six, seven, eight batters due up for him. Yeah, unretired on the day here is Tailwind. We'll see if she can reach for a third time. Two for two with two singles and a 307 average. Ted showing that he can, why well, he's the sixth best in hitting and the sixth best in, uh, in the, that, those pitching stats we were looking at earlier. Consistency is key for this Dragoons team. Checks at the slider off the plate. K Man activated. One, two from Keem Two. Swung on to Martian. The leaping catch on the infield. I'm not <laughs> sure if he had to leap for it, but he got it anyway. Able to pull down a tricky, tricky line drive. And that's how the first out of the inning is recorded. Yeah, well timed there from Chris. If it's any later, it's going to bonk off of his chest or his head. I don't know, but eh, good first out. Definitely a tricky ball to deal with, and he made the right choice. The 0-2. Taken. A check swing. The inside corner just catches it. Another great pitch from Kuntu Kintu. Doing well to hold the Dragoons to just one run in this game. First pitch just a bit low. Two outs and nobody on for Skylar Cortez. She swings at this one, hammered right to Martian, picks it up, fires it across the diamond, and a 1-2-3 inning. Top of the it. eight. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Top of the eighth, uh, 51ers trail 0-1. to 9-1-2 batters due up for them. I was just going to point out there with two outs, uh, no one on. Ted trying to sneak in another power swing. He hit it pretty hard, just didn't get the reticle where it needed to be. Yeah, it was hammered, unfortunately, dressed right into the uh, glove of the infield. And it looks like a defensive substitution for uh, the Dragoons here as Orr comes into the game. First pitch is grounded right to Agro, picks it up and fires it to Winkle, uh, Winkleson. And that's the first out here in the top of the eighth. Chris, top of his order, looking to get something together here. Winter Anubis throwing an absolute gem. The, this high junk, low velo, really fooling Chris tonight. A big swing on the inside off-speed pitch. And he just can't lay off of it. Two outs and nobody on for JT. First pitch is swung on and fouled into the dugout. And a quick 0-2 for Anubis. Her 80th pitch is on the way and it's just outside. 
This one is hammered into center field, and that's going to be a two-out base hit for Chris and his 51ers, trying to answer back here in this late game. Yeah, JT, they're finally getting a fastball that wasn't quite on the corner. Ted left it up, probably not where he wanted it. Good piece of hitting there from Chris. Alan Leon with his 338 average wants to get something started, chases that first pitch, and lines it into the glove of McLaughlin in left. The bottom of the eighth inning awaits Danson's 9-1-2 and two batters. He has a 1-0 lead. We'll see if the Dragoons can add on to that here. Another interesting name here. Lennox Resplendent chases the first pitch right into the glove of Marsh and fires it to Maeda for out number one. McLaughlin is hitless on the day, the number one leadoff hitter. Checks at the high off speed. Chris showing how he can paint those corners. Good accuracy. This one's left into zone a little bit too much as I say that. And this one is belted to right field to the warning track. Caballo makes the catch. Shaka's outfield strikes again. Yep, you almost cursed him there. He was absolutely dotting that in high and inside corner. And he left. He didn't quite hit the bullseye, and it left it right over the heart of the plate. Kintu Kintu's 75th pitch is fouled down the third base line. Again, holding the Dragoons to one run, but the bat's just not waking up for Chris today. Big swing and a miss on the heater on the outside corner. K-Man activates a check swing on the high heat. Goes for the off speed. Danson hammers it. Ratty isn't able to get a glove on it as it goes over his head to the wall. In right field, Caballo throws it back in, but it is going to be a two-out double for Danson's Dragoons. Is that the first extra base hit of this game? I think I it is. I do believe it is, Weaver. All the way in the bottom of the eighth. Wow. A lot of good hits were strung together earlier in the game uh, from the Dragoons uh, when they were able to get that one run on that big early rally. But I do not recall any extra base hits in that one. We'll see if Chris can bear down here and keep this game at one run. Runs have been borderline impossible for both teams. Uh, Ted, of course, stringing a rally together to get his. The screwball off the plate is swung onto Maeda, grounded. He steps on the bag. The Dragoons threaten, but do not score. Last chance for Chris in the area 51ers. The cleanup batter will lead things off here. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. And we'll see what he can do. Bats up dog. Steps into the batter's box, facing down Winter Anubis, who is looking for the complete game shutout. If you're a 51ers fan and the 51ers can't come back here, you absolutely have to feel for the performance of Kuntu Kintu. He's been masterful. The 0-2 has swung on off the plate. A beautiful pitch sequence there from Winter Anubis. One retired here in the top of the ninth. Ball inside. First pitch to Martian is taken low and inside. This one is swung on. Could be a bloop single into right, and it will be hope for the 51ers. They have a one-out runner aboard here in the ninth. Wow, good piece of hitting there and good speed on the bases. The Dragoons had their outfield aligned deep, and that allowed that to fall in. That could be huge. Anubis will not be getting the complete game shutout. Ted Danson goes to the bullpen for his lefty specialist, Griffin Correa. 119 ERA, low velo, low accuracy, and look at that junk. Yeah, it's the theme here for the Dragoons. We'll see how it pays off. This one is hammered right into the glove of a diving aggro. She throws to second for out number one. The play at first, not in time. Wow. What an athletic play in, from the second baseman aggro. Huge play there from aggro. Chris got to be upset that that didn't bounce or get through. That was well hit. And just like that, the 51ers down to their last out here. A runner on first. That tying run is at first base. The 2-1 taken down the middle. Here we go. The 2-2 two -two to Theodore Brim, taken outside, a full count, two outs, runner on first. Top of the ninth inning, sends the runner, and it's a foul ball into the dugout. Theodore Brim, staring down Correa, the delivery. This one is swung on, right to third base. Ryan picks it up, fires it across the diamond, and that's out number three. Danson's Dragoons hold on to take the win from Chris and the 51ers. Wow, what a game. What pitching from both teams, we said it early. It Shouldn't be surprised to anyone that this was a one nothing game. Uh, Winter Anubis and Kutu Kintu matching each other almost every step of the way. What an incredible game. Like you were saying, it was pitching first, a pitcher's duel, 
uh, through and through. Uh, and as you mentioned briefly, and it did happen to come to pass that uh, the 51ers did not end. Uh, potential mute snack. You are correct. It is <laughs> mute. Hey, it wasn't honest. me this time. <laughs> it wasn't me. I was trying to mute the stream audio because it was very loud and I ended up muting myself. Uh, but like uh, you said earlier, uh, Chris uh, wasn't able to get the win. And it's a shame, too, because of Kuntu Kintu's magnificent performance on the mound. Yeah, it, as it goes down, it's going to lower the opposing batting average for both teams, it's going to look good on their stats, but a W in the book and a critical one for Ted Danson, who, like we mentioned, is fighting for his playoff life. Absolutely. This was a much needed win for Ted. This loss for Chris kind of cripples that chance for him to get into uh, the top four, but still he is looking at a good playoff spot. If yeah, no can... question. No question. 50 winners are going to be a force in the playoffs, assuming they don't have a total meltdown and miss in these last few weeks. But yeah, we'll see. If he manages to, yeah, if he manages to get that winning record, almost nobody has secured a playoff spot or in turn been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. Sure, but we'll yeah. see how things go here in game number two of this XBL match of the week series. The 50 winners, now the host team. Looking to get a series split here against the Danson's Dragoons. The first pitch is grounded to JT. Picks it up, fires it across the diamond. Out number one recorded. Heathcliff Winkleson is stepping in in the number two spot. 296 average favors the outside pitch. We are here at Bingata for game number two. First pitch is popped up into shallow center field. Leon has to hustle, but he makes the running catch. I do believe this is Chris's number four pitcher, meaning... Uh, he pitched an absolute gem with his three. Anytime you can do that, you're a good pitching team. But uh, not much junk. In fact, I think it's nearing league minimum there. But uh, all velo. And a little boost to accuracy to make sure he can paint those corners as he loves to do. The two-seamer on the outside swung on and missed by Elena Kruger. Chris going to try to keep the pitch count down as he was able to do in the last one. Is that one 101 miles per hour on the outside corner. A check swing couldn't pull the trigger. And that's three in a row retired. We head to the bottom of the first. 51ers going to try to score some runs here. Great start there for Feller. We'll see who's pitching. Yeah, okay, Landon White here for the Dragoons. It's uh, one, of the, one of the pitchers in his rotation that isn't quite like the rest. Kind of average in all three categories. A very balanced loadout for Landon White. Good velo junk and accuracy, but nothing spectacular. We'll see if this is going to uh, play a factor against Chris and his 51ers. The 2-2 is swung on and hammered into center field on the ground ball. And that's going to be a leadoff single for Chris and the 51ers, hoping to get a series split here. Gritty piece of hitting there to lead off this first inning. I do believe that pitch was high outside of the zone. He ends up getting on top of it and putting a charge on it. Some good pitching there as that one. Uh, sorry, good hitting there as that one again lined up into center field. It looks like Chris is taking a page out of the book of Ted Danson and how he was able to score those runs in the last game, or score that run, I should say, in the last game. The last time Chris did this, he bunted, and it was not a good bunt. Looks like he's not doing it here. Won't make the same mistake twice. Runners on first and second and nobody out. A pickoff attempt to second, and they're staying where they are. Alan Leone with a 333 average, staring down Landon White. The pitch is oh. hammered into deep left field. That one is going to stay in the park. Caught at the warning track, but a charge was definitely put into that contact swing. Yeah, the curse of the contact swingers. Both these guys know that liner very well. It's a very common outcome. Sometimes you can get into one, though. We'll see. Runners at first and second and one out here in the bottom of the first. It's nothing all. Bats up dog, the cleanup hitter, is in the batter's box as he swings at this pitch. Infield fly is called as the second baseman, Agro, makes the catch. And just like that, it's two outs. Ted one good pitch away, or a few good pitches away, rather, from getting himself out of this first and second. Oh, he's going to do it. Marvin Martian chases the first pitch out of the zone, pops it up to Winkleson, and that is out number three. The 51ers threaten, but do not score. We head at the top of the second. Four, five, and six batters do up for Ted Danson and his Dragoons. Yeah, possibly the, the very noticeably average stats of the pitcher on the mound in this game for Ted. It's creating a bit of anticipation in Chris's head. Uh, that's one theory, maybe, as to why he's chasing so many pitches out of the zone. We'll see if he can uh, tighten it up going forward. 
We'll see in D, the changeup swung on and missed. And here's the 2-1. Ryan swings at this one off the glove of Feller, picks it up, fires it to first, and that's out number one. A good play from the pitcher to keep that one from getting by him. Feller only at 10 pitches thrown. Pitch number 11 to Genesis Agro is taken for a strike, a check swing. Goes to the two-seamer. This one is swung on and popped up into left field. Carries a bit, but right into the glove of Sintu Orion. Makes the grab and two away. Yeah, worth noting there on that pop-up, if you're going to hit, a, 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 I guess, a quote-unquote cheapie of a home run, it's going to go out to direct left or direct right underneath those foul poles. The dimensions are not big down there. Not big at all. The 1-1, 101 mile per hour heater right on the inside corner. The 1-2 is swung on. Maeda dives and is able to knock the ball down, but the speedy runner is able to get it to first base. And that is going to be a runner on first and a lot of speed at first with two outs here uh, for Dancing Dragoons. Yeah, it was the right batter making contact there as a hit and run is on. It most certainly is. And everyone will be safe on a really well hit ball into center field and that's going to be runners on first and second with two outs for skylar cortez the rbi dud yeah rbi dud could play in huge here but this one is hammered right into the glove of caballo in right field a little bit of an unlucky babib there for ted as that ball was smoked but chris is able to keep things at a nothing nothing game yeah, with the diminished velo, or rather the diminished power there from the RBI dead hitter. To hit it that hard, he must have had the reticle perfect. Unfortunately for him, he times it right at the right fielder. This one is grounded to Winkleson. He steps on the bag for an early first out here against the 51ers. Theodore Brim stepping in. One out and nobody on here in the bottom of the second inning. Chris's 51ers looking to get a series split here in game number two. This one is swung on right to the glove of Agro, picks it up and throws it to first. And that's a quick two outs. Richie Rat takes a first pitch strike right on the inside corner. Landon White doing good on his pitching job so far and a three up, three down inning sends us into the top of the third. Two hits for both teams uh, in the game so far, but no run scored. Snack, with what we're seeing, it would just not surprise me at all if we're in for another one nothing game. Anything can happen. Uh, Bengata's dimensions are a bit smaller than Shaka's, so we'll see if that comes into play later in the game. All it will take is one well-hit pitch. This one is gently popped up to Martian for out number one. McLaughlin staring down Feller. Swings at the first pitch, gets by the pitcher's glove and into center field. That's going to be a one-out single here for Ted Danson's Dragoons. Yeah, great piece of hitting there right up the middle. Like I said, that's Ted's sweet spot when he is hitting. We'll see if he can get another here. Heathcliff Winkleson favors that outside pitch. We'll see if Chris teases him with one. That one just off the plate. Taking his time and deciding this pitch here. The outside heat taken just off the plate. Quickly in the hole, 2-0. A lot of speed on the bag at first. And a 3-0 count here for Heathcliff Winkleson. Changeup just catches the outside corner. Makes it a 3-1 count. Goes to the Heat. Taken all the way, and it's a full count. But the runner at first. This oh. one is belted into the seats, but just foul. Ted wishing he had that one back. Oh, and that was an instance we've seen that a little bit before where uh, the pitcher has an idea of where they want the ball to go. They get the reticle placement right. And whether it's due to lag or something, we don't know. The ball just doesn't go where it was supposed to strike out nonetheless. But that one bounces off the glove of the diving second baseman. And that's going to be runners at the corners with two outs here for Ted Danston's Dragoons. Yeah, Ted going to be kicking himself here if he can't cash one of these in. He came very close to timing up that changeup for a two run homer. We'll see if Harlow Ryan here can knock one in. This changeup is lined up the middle. No one's going to get to it. And that's going to be an RBI single. The small ball strikes again. Danson's Dragoons take a 1-0 lead here in game two. <laughs> right up the middle. It's just a theme here. 
If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Big swing and a miss to bring the count one and one. Power swinging here. Big check swing on that one. 2-1. The power swing. Grounded right to Ratty. Picks it up and fires it to first to end the inning. But the damage is done. One big run for Ted Danson. That might be all that he needs, but we'll see if Chris's Area 51ers can answer back. Yeah, Chris not showing it so far yet here, but definitely don't count him out. He can have these quick strike rallies as we've seen with, with Ted. Uh, this game's far from over. First pitch on that one is popped up to Kruger. She gets under it and makes the catch. The top of the order, Andrew Maeda takes the first pitch changeup in the dirt. Landon White only 20 pitches thrown so far. This one is swung on and popped up to right field, and that should be out number two. And it is. Kruger makes the catch. JT. Big power, big contact. Chris hoping to get something started here as Landon is locked in on the mound. May see him try and get eager if he sees anything on that inside part of the plate to try and pull it down that line where he could definitely hit home runs here on contact swings on Bingata. We'll see if it happens here on the 2-1. An inside pitch, but just inside. The 3-1. Right down the middle, swung on and grounded to Agro, picks it up and throws it to first. A 1-2-3 inning. Danson's Dragoons retire the side in order. And Guy Feller will come back up uh, onto the mound for Chris and the Area 51ers, trying to hold this to a 1-0 game, which seems to have been the theme uh, for Chris in the last game. Yeah, he's uh, he's been a bit spotty here, uh, as he has been in recent weeks with his offense. But again, you know, you just never know with the contact abilities and the plate discipline of both these guys. Ted pops the 0-1 and the infield, and JT makes the catch. One away here in the top of the fourth. Guy Feller with a big 101 mile per hour heater called a strike. The change low and away is swung on and grounded to Ratty. Picks it up, throws it to first, and that's out number two. Feller pretty good early on here. You know, he's in the back of his mind, he just doesn't want to become, or he doesn't want to have the same fate that his teammate Kintu had in the previous game. And for that to happen, the 51ers' bats will need to wake up. Chris's offense is going to have to come through in the late game. As a good sequence there, gets a ground out to Martian, and the side is retired. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. The 51ers trail by one. Leon, Updog, and Martian are due up. The heart of the order for the 51ers. Yeah, it could be a critical time here for the 51ers to get something going. We won't see these hitters again at this rate until... Probably the seventh, so we'll see. The 1 0. Swung on and missed that inside strike. This one is reached for and grounded to aggro, picks it up and makes a toss to Winkleson for out number one. That's up dog, the cleanup hitter. Gonna try to pull a pitch here, maybe. Right down yep. the middle, and this one is pulled oh. right into the diving glove of Agro. She picks it up and throws it to first. Another amazing play from Agro at second base. She has been the defensive star for either team in this game. Crazy defense there. Ted has the outfield set to deep against Marvin Martian as this one is lined oh. into the <laughs> leaping glove of Burgess at short. A couple of amazing defensive plays from Danson's Dragoons. And the Chris's 51ers go quietly in the bottom of the fourth. Ted, a longtime veteran of the Super Mega franchise. Anyone who played him in the last game or has grinded PR against him in this game knows one of the great things about Ted. He is excellent at playing defense. And some great defense we have seen here tonight. The 0-2 from Feller is lined just over the leaping glove of Chris's first baseman. Caballo picks it up and throws into second, keeping the runner at first. But that is a leadoff single for Danson's Dragoons. Yeah, that's the one thing about... We've, we've mentioned those dimensions straight down to right field and straight down to left field. They enable some short-distance home runs, but they disable some doubles down the line and turn them into singles. The, the layout of that uh, foul wall. This one is grounded through the gap into right field, and that's going to be runners at first and second for Ted. Danson's Dragoons are threatening here in the fifth inning. 
no outs and runners on first and second for Heathcliff Winkleson. Might see Guy some power fell. swings in this at bat. Ted might be trying to put this one away. Guy Feller trying to keep things where they are. A power swing buildup, but lays off of the outside pitch. The 2 1 is smoked oh. through the gap. Martian keeps it from getting through the gap, and the throw to first is in time. An athletic play from the shortstop uh, to limit the damage there. Wow, Runners both of. Both of these teams' middle infielders flexing their abilities there. That's a run for sure if it gets past him. Uh, luckily for Chris, the slow speed of the two-hole hitter for the Dragoons gives him an out there. We'll see what he does with this batter, though. Might try to pitch around him to get the double play in order, and he does opt for the pitch out, and it looks like that will be where he goes. So the bases will be loaded with one out here for Guy Feller as he faces the cleanup batter, Harlow Ryan, who's one for two with the only RBI of the game so far. A crucial at-bat here. A big changeup just catches the outside corner. That one not close. The 1-1 one -one is swung on. Maeda catches it. Not enough time to make the tag at first. He tried for it, but a huge out there. Bases are still loaded, but there are now two outs for Genesis Agro. Guy Feller's job is not done yet. Chris's eyes definitely got big there. Oh, here we go. And that one is lined into right field, and that will be another RBI. The runner sent, and it starts going back to third base. So the bases will remain loaded, but that is an RBI single for Ted Danson's Dragoons. A two to nothing lead. More apprehensive base running there from Ted. Yeah, he had a play like that earlier in game one, as this one should end the inning. But Ted, trusting his contact ability, doesn't want to get thrown out on the bases. It elects to try and start a rally. Uh, you can't in this inning, however. An interesting decision indeed to keep the runner at third, but not altogether a, a negative one. Uh, right. Perhaps two runs is all Danson needs uh, in order to uh, keep this game where it is. Bottom of the fifth, Chris still trying to find a way to rally up and uh, and make his make some noise here in this game. As this one is belted into left field and a leadoff single for Chris's 51ers trying to answer back. Maybe some life here for the alien team. That was probably... Uh, one of his one, first, second, or third best pieces of hitting we've seen tonight. Let's see if he can tack on another. Pitching for the 51ers has been out of this world. Let's see if the bats can do the same. Pickoff attempt is not in time. The 0-1 pitch to Theodore Brim. Swing and a miss at the heat down Main Street. Landon White is locked in. The 0-1 taken just inside. This one is swung on into the infield. Agro is able to make the catch a running effort. I thought for a second there, maybe it was going to get over the head of Agro, but she's just been so excellent, as has her shortstop counterpart. No hit there. Some excellent defense yet again from uh, Dancing Dragons. This one up and in, swung on. Agro's going to go for two. She gets the out at second. For first, <laughs> it's a double play. And just like that, the 51ers inning is over. We head to the top of the sixth, Danson, with a commanding 2 nothing lead. Yeah, close play there at second. As many of us know, when you have that right-handed second baseman and they have to flip to second, sometimes they just take all day to get the ball out. Didn't, uh, didn't matter there for the Dragoons. Ted Danson with some immaculate defense in these two games. This one is hammered. Oh. Martian with a diving effort. Keeps the ball from getting into the outfield. Fires it to first. And that is out number one, a great out indeed. Uh, Martian gets more action, picks up this one. Not as showy as last time, but gets the out all the same, two outs. Yeah, not to be outdone is Marvin Martian, very impressive here. And another first pitch swung on. Martian is going to try to record all three outs of the inning, and he does. Side is retired, we head to the bottom of the sixth. Nine, one, and two batters due up here for Chris's Area 51ers. But as we head into the bottom of the sixth, Landon White, only 41 pitches thrown for Danson's Dragoons. Yeah, 41 pitches. He's absolutely cruising. And you can tell Chris isn't happy. He tried to signal, I don't know if he caught it, he tried to signal us with the chat wheel there. Uh, he wanted to type boo. <laughs> He's not happy with how things are going. He's going to try to wake up here in the late game. Anything can happen. This one right down Main Street is belted into center field, but it does not hook. 
Tailwind gets there and makes the catch. He put a charge into that one. Yeah, put a charge into it. You always want to be rewarded on those. Sometimes it's just not to be. Andro Maeda steps in, looks at the strike. The 1-1 one, one on the way from Landon White. Another breaking ball catching the strike zone. The 1-2. Just a bit inside. Landon White's 49th pitch of the game is a ball bringing it to a full count. Nobody on and one out. Catches oh. the inside corner, frozen with the 92 mile per hour pitch. And JT represents uh, Chris's last hope here in the bottom of the sixth. That was a filthy pitch. One of Ted's best of the game in either game. Absolutely able to freeze him on that. Beautiful pitch, swung and a miss for the three-pitch strikeout, and that is how the sixth inning ends. We head to the top of the seventh, top of the order, due up for Ted Danson's Dragoons. They lead two to nothing. Yeah, Ted Danson putting on a master class in changing speeds. That fastball only, uh, I think, 96 miles an hour, but looking like 100 because of the way he's sequencing. Great pitching here. The 0-1 is swung on and lifted into left field. Sintu Orion ranges over and makes the catch. And the first out of the inning is re recorded. Feller also keeping his pitch count down at just 67 pitches thrown here in the seventh. The outside cutter is taken for strike number one. Going inside with the cutter just missing and a check swing from Ted. He wanted it and didn't pull the trigger. Power swing there. <laughs> Big power swing and a miss. The one, two. Check swing on the contact swing. The high changeup is swung on past the glove of Feller, gets into center field, and that's going to be a one out single for Danson's Dragoons. Classic two strike Ted right there. Got to tip your cap. And hitting it to his favorite place, right past the pitcher into center field. Right up the middle. Elena Kruger takes the first pitch strike on the inside corner. Chris still trying to find his mark. And Ted trying to capitalize on those mitches. Right, misses right down the middle and a swing and a miss. The outside heater freezes her and Kruger goes down looking. Yeah, not quite as pinpoint on the corner, I think, as Chris wanted, but it was, it was plenty good enough to fool Ted. Good pitch. And the speed of those 90 Ego heaters can sometimes just fool you as this one is popped up behind home plate and will end the inning. Seventh inning stretch here at the Mingata Bowl. The Area 51ers have some catching up to do. They trail by two with no run scored in the series. Like I said back in the fourth, three, four, and five hitters now up in the seventh. It, if the game keeps going the way it has, this is the, this is the last we will see of Chris's best hitters. And Chris wants to make sure that does not happen. A swing and a miss on the outside breaking pitch. The one, two. Heat. Got a piece of it, but it's lifted along the foul line. Winkelson has it, and that's out number one. Bats up dog. The designated hitter stepping in. Takes the first pitch just inside. Landon White. This one is swung on off of the body of the shortstop, and that's going to get into the outfield, and that'll be a one-out hit for the 51ers, a hard-hit ball, and just couldn't be corralled. Wow, the way the way the Dragoons' middle infield has been playing, I, I thought for sure she'd come up with that. Big break there for the 51ers. A runner on first with one out as Landon passes 60 pitches. Three pitches inside, all called for a ball. This one is swung on to aggro, flips it to second, fires it to first, double wow. play, another double play from the Dragoons defense, limits the damage, in fact, keeps Chris's area 51ers from scoring. Big gamble there from Chris, 3-0, composed trade activated, instead of uh, going with a traditional 3-0 take, he tried to rip one, it just didn't work. A good pitching performance from the Dragoons is bolstered by that incredible defense. Dragoons hitting to a ground out there to start things off here at the top of the eighth, and it looks like the 51ers will be going to the bullpen. Abaduct, four-seamer, two-seamer change, high velo. Starts things off with the changeup swung on and fouled right at the plate. Extremely similar pitcher here to the starter, Guy Feller. 
Uh, we'll see if that'll fool Ted. Just trying to get back to uh, some buffer stats as Feller's own stats were seeming to deteriorate after crossing the, uh, I believe, 70 pitch threshold. The 2 2 is grounded to Maeda, steps on the bag, and that'll be out number two here in the top of the eighth. Crimson Burgess, who has been making some spectacular plays on the defense for the Dragoons. Swings at this one towards the gap in left field. Leon's got a hustle. He's not going to make a diving effort. Instead, corrals it safely and throws it to second. That'll be a two-out single. Yeah, just not enough speed there from either the left fielder or the center fielder to get to the spot of that ball. Good hitting, good placement there on the bloop from the Dragoons. The inside heat is a check swing taken but it is called for a strike. They're going to be trying to steal a tent for the Dragoons. The throw, the flip to Rat, I should say, in time. And the Dragoons are caught stealing there. Ted gambling there to try and get an insurance run. I like the call, though. He, he was probably one, maybe two seconds away from catching Chris in the middle of the pitch animation. I, I like it. I like the call. Landon White is on fire for the Dragoons. 65 pitches thrown in this game. The 1-1 one -one to Sintu Orion is swung on and grounded to third base. Ryan picks it up and fires it across the diamond to Winkelson. Out number one is reported. We'll see if Landon White can get the complete game shutout that Anubis Winters couldn't get in game one. This one, first pitch is popped up in the infield. Agro makes the catch. A quick two down here in the eighth inning. Yeah, Heat really starting to get turned up here on the 51ers. It's it's coming down to crunch time here. Richie Rat trying to keep uh, the 51ers hopes alive here in this game. Swung on and lifted into left field. Should be playable. And McLaughlin makes the grab. The side is retired. Top of the ninth inning. The Dragoons looking for some insurance runs. They lead two to nothing. Three defensive outs is all, the, all Ted needs for a sweep in an, a series where the games are must win and pretty much every game from now on for Ted is must win but this would be massive a huge series for him indeed the first pitch is popped up into left field Orion hustles over and makes the catch Lennox resplendent the number nine DH stepping in batting a 158 on the season the inside heat just misses 1-0 pitch on the way from Abaduct. Big swing and a miss. Fooled her with the changeup. The Lohita swung on and grounded to Martian. Picks it up and throws it to first for out number two. Looks like Marvin Martian there at shortstop is tense as far as mentality goes. If Chris can mount a rally here in the bottom of the ninth and get his best hitter up, Marvin Martian, uh, that could play huge. Tense lowering the uh, stats that he would have at the plate as it's three up and three down for Danson's Dragoons. 9-1-2 batters due up for Chris on his last legs in this series, trying to avoid getting swept by Danson's Dragoons. Stallone Caballo to lead things off. Landon White may not be getting the complete game shutout. Ted Danson thinking about going to the bullpen, and he's making a defensive substitution. Crimson Burgess comes out for Juniper Orr. We saw this a little bit earlier in uh, in the last game, that, that same defensive substitution. Yeah, and I would think here if Chris does get a, a base runner or two on, just like in the bottom of the ninth of last game, then we might see Ted go to his specialist, Correa. Caballo trying to get that pitch count up. He takes every pitch and the inside strike, ring him up looking, did not get the bat off his shoulders, and that is out number one here in the bottom of the ninth. Andro Maeda. The 0-1. This is swung on. Right past the leaping glove of Agro, the second baseman. That's going to be a one-out single. And the tying run comes to the plate in the form of JT. you got to think Correa is coming in here. You've got to think the Dragoons are looking for a game-ending double play. Low and away, just outside. The 1-0. Taken for a strike. Wow, no lefty specialist here with perhaps the most dangerous lefty in the lineup, but it looks like it's going to be the second out. Lined softly into the glove of Agro. No need to make a spectacular play there. The 51ers are down to their last out here. Alan Leon steps in. Takes a first pitch. Breaking ball strike on the inside corner. This one, grounded to the shortstop. Orr picks it up, throws it to first. 
And that is how this ball game ends. The 51ers are swept by Dancing Dragoons. And the Dragoons just shut out Chris in both games. Back to back, absolute gems there from Winter Anubis and Land Landon White, correct? Landon White does right. indeed get the complete game shutout that eluded Anubis White in game one. What a performance. We, it's exactly what we said when we were doing pregame. Both of these teams pitching first, three total runs combined over two games. Unfortunately for the 51ers, all three runs in favor of Ted. Fortunately for Ted, two massive wins there. He, he is back in this playoff picture. Absolutely. Ted's playoff odds have just increased significantly with this Oh, so important sweep over Chris and the area 51ers. Chris is still himself in a pretty good situation looking for that uh, uh, postseason berth, although things are now a little bit more in jeopardy after this sweep. Yeah, not a good sweep for Chris. Uh, just knowing what I know about him and how he plays, I expect he, he will more than likely be fine going forward. Still two games over 500, I believe at 13 and 11. So uh, still in command of his of his own destiny, uh, and the same could have been said could be said about Ted too, who really took things into his own hands today. Absolutely, uh, Chris falls to thirteen and eleven, while Ted climbs to eleven and thirteen, mirrors of each other. Right. Just what an what a series! Not no dingers as we expected. Uh, not a lot of you know flashy offense, but some really good hits and some incredible defensive plays uh, on both both parts of the game. But uh, Danson's Dragoons, obviously, uh, coming away with a more favorable outcome. Yeah, Danson's Dragoons, middle infield. I can't remember the name of the shortstop, but I know the second baseman. Her name was Agro. Agro at second base. Yeah, Agro in particular, uh, excellent today in both games. And that was clearly a factor as uh, not a ton of strikeouts for both teams. Uh, a lot of pitching to contact. And when you do pitch to contact, you got to have a good defense. And that's exactly how Ted was able to keep these games shut out, back to back shutouts. And I believe it was uh, Burgess in on shortstop right. for Dragoon, the starting shortstop, who then was taken out in both games uh, in the later part for Juniper Orr, who I believe had those better defensive stats. Nonetheless, <laughs> Burgess yeah. is not the defensive star and is still able to make some amazing plays. Uh, your middle infield is, is top notch. And, of course, not to be outdone was uh, Marvin Martian for the uh, 51ers making some spectacular plays uh, at shortstop as well. Sure, yeah, he was excellent. Um, both teams, great pitching, great defense. And as we, as we had predicted, not a lot of offense for either team. Again, only three runs combined, but they all went to Ted. And sometimes you just got to take them how you can get them and, and take your wins and call it a day. And as you speculated, those runs were got by those patented Ted Danson rallies. He was able to play the small ball game, get some good contact, rip them up the infield, and uh, hitting it up the middle was the name of the game to, to get those runs. Yeah, few, if any, extra base hits. I know we had the one in game one. Did we even have one in game two? I, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> uh, but, like I, but yeah, just strings of singles. That's all... Ted needed today to get the job done. Big props to him. And get the job done, he did. As we said, Ted Danson climbs to 11-3. and three. Chris falls to 13-11, and 11, but both of them firmly seated in that playoff picture. We'll see if they can make the postseason in the weeks to come. Only three weeks left of play uh, in the XBL, and like I said earlier, it's anybody's game. Absolutely, especially in that, uh, we'll say, 9, 10 through 12 uh playoff seating range so now now ted like i said pregame we have a matchup tomorrow night a bonus match of the week between bk's dudeness and alec ad alec was the player ahead of ted tonight uh ted with the huge sweep here puts a ton of pressure on the game tomorrow and i believe with that sweep ted does provisionally climb up into the top 12 which does knock alec ad down into the 13th spot. So now he's the one outside looking in, making this a whole lot of pressure, I'm assuming, in the BK series that will be happening tomorrow night. Yeah, huge opportunity for Alec to answer back uh, after the unfavorable outcome for him tonight. Uh, 
meaning, you know, he was rooting for, I'm sure he was rooting for Chris so that he could have a better chance at that 12 seed. Uh, but it'll also be a huge opportunity for BK, who is in a bit of danger himself. I believe he's at 500 in the standings. That's so correct, yes. Big, big series tomorrow night for both teams. Absolutely. It'll be very interesting to see how that series goes, how those players adapt to that playoff stress that is coming in uh, as, as we're getting closer and closer to this yeah. season's end. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. Can't wait to call tomorrow night. And that will be called by, I believe, you and Dwayne tomorrow night, correct? Correct. Yes, Absolutely. Correct. Uh, be sure to tune into that tomorrow evening. Uh, as far as this broadcast goes, we are wrapping things up here. Thank you all so much for tuning in to uh, XBL Match of the Week. I've been Light Snack, a.k.a. Floribel, a.k.a. your uh, play-by-play announcer, Weaver for Prez here on Color. Thank you so much for joining me, Weaver. Thank you. That was a blast. Can't wait. Can't wait for next time. And you're going to have a blast, I'm sure, tomorrow night in that secondary bonus match of the week hosted yep. by Weaver and Dwayne with BK His Dudeness taking on Alec AD. We hope to see you there. And as for us, we wish you all a wonderful night. Have a good week. And we'll see you all next time. Take care.